Holy shit, it took two hours to upload part one. Tired. So anyways, I call them up. And she says the order's been vacated. All right, so I'm like, so that means that I can call there? Yeah, okay. So before I actually call my ex, I call up the DCF worker. All right, now this lady had been being a fucking hot ass with me the whole time. Because you got a bunch of people in her ear and saying whatever they were saying to her. And they're like, she's like, I'm like, I'm leaving fish. I'm leaving for fishing. They vacated the order. I want to talk to my daughter. I don't know what the deal is with, with contacting my ex because of what the fucking, what you guys had her sign. And can you call and have my daughter call me? She's like, okay. So I call her back and she says, my daughter doesn't want to talk to me. I'm like, yeah, right. Lady, I'm going fishing. My daughter knows I'm going fishing. There's never been one single trip that I've ever left for in her whole entire life where it wasn't hugs and kisses and I love you and I'll see you when I get back and behave yourself and be a good girl for your stepmother and be a good girl for your nana, wherever she was at. Be a good girl and I love you and I'll see you when I get home. No way. Another tyrant. So, I'm like, lady... I'm about to go fishing. If you're telling me this, I'm going to come up there right now and get my daughter. And she's like, well, you do what you have to do. All right. So I go up and I tell the captain, I'm like, I'm like, yo, I got to go. I got to go get my daughter. He's like, what? He's like, get the fuck off my boat. Now, mind you, I seen this fucking asshole. We fishing in Boston. I seen this motherfucker up in Augusta, Maine. A couple days before Christmas, because this happened like, Days after Christmas. And, um... Father to father, this dude should have been like, go do what you gotta do. This dude's like, get the book off my boat. Like, this is my cousin's fucking boat. So, I fucking leave. I don't even get into words. I ain't even get into words, because I would have gotten into fucking a lot of words. So, I take the fuck off. I go right the fuck up there. Yeah, I call the police, and I'm like, nope. I'm not, I don't know if I'm allowed to contact, I uh, fucking whatever. Can you arrange a pickup? They vacated the order. Yep. So I go up, I pick her up, and I get her back. And when I picked her up, yeah, I'm still like, I got this shit all jumbled up. Just a series of events, because I made so many trips back and forth in December to New Hampshire. Like, there was like four or five different scenarios where I was going up there and and if it wasn't one thing, it was another thing. So, so I get my daughter back and I hightail it back to Maine. Get the fuck out of New Hampshire. I rescinded all signatures with everything, with everybody, everybody involved, the school in New Hampshire, DCF, I, I fucking rescinded them, my signatures with everybody. So I take my daughter back. And that's when I went and stayed in the van with her for friggin' months. Okay, so that 10 grand that I made that month all got spent in fucking legal bullshit. And my car had died earlier that month. And that's when I had to buy another van. And then I bought a truck. And that's why, like, this. I had a lot going on that month. So, I held on to my daughter tight. Instead of helping me, these people tried to trip me up. They tried to fuck my life up. Worse than it was already fucked up from my ex doing what the fuck she did. All right, taking my kids, taking the money, taking all of my property, everything I worked for fucking years for. She never worked. She never made no money. I paid for all that shit. Two storage units packed to the fucking brim. So much shit. Gross shit. All kinds of shit. Every, everything we fucking owned that I paid for. So... This is when it really fucking dawned on me that I'm all done fucking with these people, family or not. 
Now, I made a few more interactions since then. You know, it's evident these people aren't going to change, especially my mother and my father. Okay? These people, my mother and father fucking, they did so much stupid shit growing up. It was like their moment to redeem themselves as grandparents for all the stupid shit they did as parents to come in and correct me. You guys still don't have your fucking shit together. You're going to come in and fucking correct me while I'm not getting high on fucking drugs. I was smoking weed, but I like, I'm not doing drugs. I don't drink. I don't get fucked up. And these people came in and fucking undermined me. They came against me and my children and my family. They tried to destroy. They never tried to help. And the help that was supposedly given was thrown in my face and was abused. They don't fucking help people and fucking throw it in their face. That's not help. That's fucking manipulation. That's manipulation. That doesn't fucking help. You don't play games. You don't give something so you have a fucking reason to fuck with somebody. No, no, no. So... I'm all done. I'm all done fucking with these people. I don't care if I come from them. I don't care if they're family. It doesn't matter. Blood only runs fucking so deep, okay? Because they could be your best friend, your family, your wife. It could be the person right fucking next to you. It doesn't matter who it is. Sometimes it really just doesn't fucking matter. It's all about the soul. It's all about the heart and the minds of the people. And that shit doesn't discriminate. Okay? It's about the fucking mindset. So, instead of being there for me, these people came against me. So when I talk about people and all these people, a lot of my family... Mind you, I rolled one at my aunt's table at Christmas. Everybody was drinking. The whole house, bottles everywhere. Everybody was having a good time. They asked my fucking 24-year-old cousin if she was all right to drive before they're going to send her out. I'm like, are you guys all right? Like, you're going to give me shit about smoking weed, but you're going to fucking ask a 24-year-old girl if she's good to drive after you know she's drank? What? And you're going to shit on me? Now, this is before, okay? I rolled one at the table. I told my cousins, I'm like, I'm going to roll. And they're like, what? You're fucking nuts. I'm like, no. I'm, I smoke weed. I don't drink. I'm going to fucking go get my weed. So I busted one out right at the table. <laughs> right next to my cousin, my cousin's husband that's a cop in New Hampshire. Highly illegal. Sorry, but we're in mass. The fucking state laws apply. And then my aunt seen me, and she was like, is that pot at my table? She was like, yep. She was like, get that away from my table. I was like, hold on, I'm almost done. <laughs> so my grandmother's friends at the party, she had had a few drinks, and she was on me. She was like, I want to smoke with you. I was like, ah. She was like, you better not leave here without coming to get me. So... I'm like, all right, this lady's going to be 60, 65 years old anyways. And we go outside, we're shooting the shit. She was cool. We we were just shooting the shit, smoking. But she kept being like, don't bogart that. Don't bogart that. I'm like, lady, this isn't the 60s, yo. This is some high-test shit now. (laughs) So we burned one. My aunt was all right with me. No, she... You go outside and smoke that. Okay. Ten minutes later, they're wailing this lady out. <laughs> Gotta take her fucking home. Now they're mad at me. They're mad at me. Look at what you did to her. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, she wanted to smoke, and then she kept fucking... <sighs> Yo, you better calm down, lady. This shit's fucking potent. <coughs> so they caught her off. They take her away. I go back in the house. Everybody's mad at me. 
they all know I'm staying in the van at that point. And, and it wasn't like I was staying in the van every night at, at that point. I was in for one, two nights and then gone back out fishing. So I'd scoop my daughter up. We'd stay in the van. We'd not only just stay in the van, I was making good money. So we were staying in hotels. We were doing whatever the fuck we wanted to do. We were going out, having fun, spending money, and just doing our thing. Expecting checks and everything to go. Well, when they took her and I jetted back to Maine, I was I had to stop fishing right there and then. And this was one thing my ex knew. She knew that if I... Once she left, that I had nobody to watch Sophie that I could really count on. Not that I could count on her because it was shit going on when I was gone. Anyway, so now I'm in this fucking predicament. So I went and I fucking stayed in the van. I did. And I fucking, I stayed for the whole winter in the van with my daughter. And I had to. I had to. It was either that or give her up. At that point, I'm like... Better to be in the van and away from all these motherfuckers than to be there in the midst of fucking haters and people trying to cut my fucking throat. Nah. So I did what I had to do. Here I am. So with no help, with no love, with no respect, with no, we're not even, with, with not even a care and concern for my daughter. It was all about the fucking hate and fucking jealousy and fucking just feeling towards me where they wanted to come at me okay i've said shit to all these people except for my aunt i never really had words with my aunt i had almost respect for my aunt until this shit took place but my mother and my father i had a lot of shit to say to them about who they were going through and all the years growing up and watching all the stupid fucking shit they did from drinking to drugs to people they brought into everything just clown shit clown shit I like I felt like a parent to my parents. Like I'm seeing things that they're not seeing. Like what the fuck are you guys doing? Well, a lot of people tried to stick me with the same rap that they got. If you've seen that video, I'm not them. I might come from them. I'm not them. I made my own path. I walked my own path. God took me on my own path in preparation because he knew that you guys were going to do this. So this is what I was groomed for my whole life. Not only to fucking take care of my children and be a good dad, but to fucking deal with the narcissism in my life and know how to deal with it and move with these motherfuckers because I have a lifetime of training dealing with fucking narcissists. From my mother and father to my brother and sister's mother to fucking just shady backstabbing, shit-talking haters that fucking hate for no reason. So, I was groomed for this. I was groomed for this for my whole life. So, surprise. Surprise. You guys picked the wrong one. You picked the wrong one. And now I got the microphone and I'm going to talk about all this shit. And nobody's exempt from this. Nobody's exempt from the truth and what's going on and what happened. And nobody's exempt. None. Nope. Everybody's getting put on blast. All right here. Right here. So after all the shit that I went through. And all the struggle that my daughter had to endure with me. Because she had to endure. Well, she learned a lot. She learned a lot. She also went through a lot. She was always taken care of, safe, fed, clean clothes, bathroom, all that shit. But, you know, people want to talk shit and they want to do fucked up shit. If I was a woman with my child and I had to stay in the car, I would have had people fucking doing whatever the fuck they could to help me. But because I'm a man and I'm Jimmy Sharp, they wanted to fucking come at me. They wanted to ruin me. And they wanted to take what was mine. What is mine? Now, a lot of these feelings come from just my life from as a child. Like, you're that kid, okay? What the hell? But then the rest of it comes from my ex talking shit. And my ex trying to flip everybody in my life against me. So, the whole community came against me. But I'm going to end this like this. Ye shall be hated for my name's sake. Okay? And I talked to every one of these people about Jesus Christ and about God. 
and nobody wants to hear it. Everybody thinks I've like lost my mind. No, not at all, not at all. See how I made it through? See how everything turned out? Favor isn't fair. And me making it through all this bullshit that you guys threw at me, God's laughing at you guys, all of you. Friends, enemies, family. You guys aren't friends anymore. Who was? Who once was friends? You guys worked as legion. For your feelings. You did fucked up shit. You guys moved against me and you never stopped. How do you like how it's working out? How do you like how God flipped the script? How do you like how I flipped the script? I give it all up to God. I'm just getting started. You guys should have never did what you did. That's some fucked up shit. Especially when you guys all come from mommy and daddy and people catering to you and people helping and giving in your comfy places and houses growing up as children while I grew up fucking running in, in cars and locked up and all kinds of shit because of the fucking chaos that came from my parents being who they are, the shit in the fucking family. Because this is breaking generational curses. That's what this is. That's what you're watching. You're witnessing breaking generational curses without a fucking doubt, okay? Because I walked and I strayed away from the pack because... I don't agree with any of that shit because I would never treat somebody like that. I would never put my foot on somebody's neck when they were down. That's just not me. But there's a lot of you motherfuckers that will. Just for your own enjoyment, for your own satisfaction. So, now we'll see how it all turns out. You know where I'm at now. You know a little bit. And it's only going to get better from here. Mocked with those twins. Okay. Let that be what it is. God told me when I was little, I was going to have a big family. You guys don't know the shit that I went through growing up. Told me. You're going to have a big family. So one set of twins and my little girl. Then another set of twins then another set of twins. I knew what was happening. Now with my other seven children, everybody involved in that, you guys fucked with my blessings. My children are my blessings. My children are my heart and soul. I will never stop. I will get back to my children. And it's coming sooner than everybody thinks. Okay? Those are my blessings. That girl was the vessel. That's how it played itself out. Okay? So in the end, jealousy and greed and bullshit, and that's how that girl moved. And it goes into my family, same shit. Jealousy and hate and fucking resentment for things that I've said. And, you know, no forgiveness for, for the things that I did. Like, their shit was any fucking better. I just went on a fucking tear because... I, as a kid, I was angry at the world, and I felt some sort of entitlement. Nobody owes you a fucking thing in this life. You owe it to yourself to get the fuck up and go try. Nobody fucking gift wrap you a fucking future and be like, here you go. But you guys all got comfy beds and homes and fucking families, and you guys did your thing, right? Why aren't you guys fucking excelling in the world? I was supposed to walk my path. My path made me who I am. My path made me resilient, still kind, hot, love, and humble. I'm not being humble anymore like that. I'm not. Because the realization is it could be the ones right next to you that are planning on your demise. Smiling in your face. Talking shit behind your back. Trying to cut your fucking throat. Trying to assassinate your character. Okay. So, it's alright. It's 
all good. I forgive you guys, but I'm not fucking with you guys no more. None of you. The only person that showed me love that Christmas was my cousin Dennis. And I love you, kid. You gave me the biggest hug, and I needed that fucking hug. I was going through the worst shit in my life. I love you. I fucking love you. If you ever need anything. If you ever need anything. Everybody else, you guys can all kick rocks. You better go talk to God. Okay? Because you owe. There's a debt. There's a spiritual debt that you guys owed for what you did. You guys are fucked up. Love you. Always. I'm all done. That's a wrap. No Della Russo's. No funerals. I will not be there. I'm not coming. Promise. I'm not coming. Let the dead bury the dead. That's what Jesus said. And you know what? Spiritually, you guys are dead in your soul. You got to be some sort of fucked up to do some shit to somebody like that while they're struggling, going through the worst shit in their life. But it's okay. It's okay. Because all this did was put my resilience on display. My tenacity. Okay? I'll never tap. You guys never went through any of the shit that I did. Now you can miss me. Enjoy your lives. Love you guys. Bye.